Hey guys, Mr. B here and welcome to another virtual lab. This one, we're going to be dealing with pulleys today. So I've got four pulleys set up here and we're going to be taking a look at how much force is required to lift these weights off of the ground using these pulley systems compared to just if we were to lift them on our own. So you ready? Let's get going. All right, now the first thing we're gonna have to do before we start using these pulleys is we're gonna have to figure out how much force is required to actually lift this weight on its own. Now on every single one of these pulleys, I have one kilogram suspended. So this weight here is also one kilogram. Obviously it's not the same as these that are suspended here, but they are all each one kilogram. So what we're gonna do first is we are going to hook this onto a spring scale and we're gonna read how much force does this weight you know, way on its own. We'll record that as our output force on our data table. And then that is going to be the same output force for all four of these pulleys and uh, every single trial. Okay. So we're going to take a look at what this says. All right. So it looks like our output force is 10 Newtons. So we're going to record that again on our data table. And this is our output force. And this is going to be the same for all four trials because we're using the same weight. So please record this as 10 Newtons on your data table. All right, so this is going to be our first pulley setup. This is a fixed pulley. So we call this one a fixed pulley because the pulley here is fixed in place. It cannot move. So for this first one, what we're going to do is we're going to attach our string scale to the string and we're going to be pulling down and we're going to see, be seeing how much force it takes to lift this weight up. Okay. Now we do need to count the number of strings that are pulling up on this weight which will help us to determine our mechanical advantage later on. So we've got this string here attached to the weight and this string is pulling up on the weight. This string here, however, is going to be pulling down. So you're only going to have one string that is pulling up on the weight. So you're going to record that on your data table for pulley number one. And then from here, like I said, we are going to um, pull on this string scale and this will be our input force. Okay. So I'm going to take this and uh, we're going to, we're going to do some pulling here. So here we go. All right, so we are pulling on this first pulley and it looks like our spring scale is reading about 10 newtons. So we're gonna record that as our input force for pulley number one, and that is 10 newtons. All right, so this is now gonna be our second pulley. And in this system, we now have a movable pulley. So the difference between this one and the first one is that this pulley now can move with the weight. So as we pull the string, we'll notice that the pulley actually rises with the weight. So this is no longer a fixed pulley, but a movable pulley. And um, we still have a one kilogram mass on here. So again, we're gonna attach our spring scale to the string and we're gonna pull to see how much force is needed to lift this object. Okay, now just like in the first one, we need to count how many strings are pulling up on this weight. So if we look, we have this first string, which is pulling up on the weight. And we also have a second string on the other side. So for this one, there are gonna be two strings that are pulling up on this weight. So you're gonna record that on your data table first. And then let's hook up the spring scale and do some pulling. So here we go. All right, so we are pulling up and it looks like the amount of force for this is about maybe five Newtons. So we'll record this on your data table for our input force for pulley number two, we have about five Newtons. All right, so we are now at pulley number three and this pulley is a combination of a fixed pulley, which we have up at the top and a movable pulley, which you have down at the bottom. Another term that this can be called is a block and tackle. So you'll notice that on this one, when we pull, that the top pulley stays in place, but the bottom pulley moves up with the weight. Okay, so again, we're gonna attach our spring scale to this. We're gonna see how much force is required to lift this weight with this pulley system. And just like with the previous ones, we need to count how many strings are attached to this weight pulling up, okay? So we've got one string here, we have a second string here, we have a third string here, and a fourth string here. There are four strings attached to this weight pulling upwards. There's a fifth string here, but this string is pulling down, not up. So we are not gonna count this string, okay? So in your data table, you're gonna write down four strings for this pulley system. Again, this is pulley number three. Four strings total, and then we're gonna attach our string scale and pull up and see how much force is required to lift this weight. All right, so you're pulling here now on pulley number three, and it looks like the amount of force required to lift this one is about three Newtons. So record that on your data table for pulley number three as the input force. That is gonna be about three Newtons. All right, so for our last pulley system here, pulley system number four, we now have a, um, 
triple block and tackle essentially. So we've got again a fixed pulley up top, we've got a movable pulley down below, um, but we just simply have more strings attached to the weight. Okay, so we're going to count first the number of strings that we have for this pulley system. We're going to record that on our data table, and then we'll attach our string scale and pull on this one and see how much force is required. So if we count the total number of strings, we've got one here. Okay, so we'll try to turn the mixing to this. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, there are six strings here attached to the weight that are pulling up. We have a seventh string here, but this string is pulling down. So we are not going to count this string for the uh, number of strings attached to the weight pulling up. Okay. So again, record that six strings on your data table. Let's attach our string scale and see what our input force is. All right. So on our last pulley system, pulley number four, we are applying pressure to our string scale. And it looks like our input force is reading at about two newtons. All right, so we're going to record that as our input force for pulley number four is about two newtons. All right, guys, so that is the end of this virtual lab, at least the lab portion of it. Thank you to my lovely helper, Zach Hilgers, here for doing all the pulling, which he wasn't in much of the action other than his hand. But again, thanks for being here, Zach. Um, so from here, we're going to move to the post lab and take a look at the questions. So I'll see you there. Hey, guys, welcome to the post lab for this virtual lab on pulleys. Um, we're going to be taking a look, of course, at the questions here and the data. Um, if you haven't filled out your data table yet, um, you should have these numbers in there. And if not, you should fill them in. So for our um, output force for all trials, we should have 10 newtons because we are lifting the same weight for all of them. Um, as for the input force, um, for the first setup, the first pulley, which was a fixed pulley, um, our input force was 10 newtons. And then for our second pulley system, our movable pulley, we had 5 newtons. For our third pulley system, which was a block and tackle, or essentially a fixed pulley with a movable pulley down at the bottom, we had three newtons. And then our last pulley setup was essentially a triple block and tackle, and we had two newtons. Uh, and then number of strands of string pulling up on the weight uh, was one, two, four, and six. All right, um, so first question here. Um, it says, calculate and record the mechanical advantage of the pulley for each setup. All right, so in order for us to determine the mechanical advantage of each pulley system, what we're going to do um, is, is we're going to take the output force that we have and we're going to divide it by the input force. Okay, now I know in previous labs um, we've been given an equation for mechanical advantage, but there's no equation given to us in this lab. Okay, however, if we remember from the notes, mechanical advantage is uh, essentially uh, is how much a machine multiplies our force by, okay? So if a machine has a mechanical advantage of two, that means that it would be taking our force and multiplying it by two. So it essentially means that if we put in one Newton of force, it's gonna pull with two Newtons of force, okay, and vice versa. So what we can do to determine our mechanical advantage is we can take the output force that we have and divide it by our input force, and that will tell us how many times our machine is multiplying our force for us. So in the first simple machine here, we have, of course, 10 newtons of output force. We had to put in 10 newtons of input force, we take 10 divided by 10, and we're gonna find that this first um, pulley system had a mechanical advantage of one, meaning that it, it wasn't actually making us any stronger. The amount of force that we had to put in was the exact same amount of force we would have had to put in if we just simply lifted the weight completely on its own. Um, as for the second one, output force was 10, but our input force was only 5. So if we do the math on this one, 10 divided by 5, we will find that our input force here is going to be 2. So this one actually was making things easier. Um, it is actually taking our force and doubling it, or essentially saying that we only had to use half the force to lift the object. All right, so what I'd like you to do here is then quickly pause the video. I'd like you to try then calculating the mechanical advantage for pulley setup three and pulley setup four, and then we'll continue on with the rest of this question. All right, so if you had did your calculations correctly, you should have a mechanical advantage of 3.3 .3 for pulley setup number three, and a mechanical advantage of five for pulley setup number four. Um, okay, so it says here for number two, plot a graph of mechanical advantage versus the number of strands of string attached to your weight. 
Um, all right, now I'm doing this on Kami. Um, you're most likely doing this on Kami as well because I don't have a Google Doc um, made for this one. It is a PDF. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab a little drawing tool and we're just gonna make a quick little um, Y and X axis. And we are gonna have a number of strands, uh, we're gonna have mechanical advantage on the Y axis. Okay, so over here we'll have um, mechanical advantage. And then on the X axis here, we will have number of strands of string. Okay, and um, I guess we'll we'll um, label our, we'll put some tick marks here. So I guess our mechanical advantage went from one to six. So let's just go, you know, one, or sorry, zero, <laughs> sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And number of strands of string um, went from one to six uh, as well. Oh, sorry, reading the wrong things, but either way, we're, we'll have the same thing. So this is zero, um, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so there we go. Um, so we're gonna plot this real quick. Um, so let's see, our number of strands of string was one, our mechanical advantage is one. So our first one was looking like this. Then our number of strands of string was two and our mechanical advantage was two. So then our next one looks like this. And um, then we had four strands of string and a mechanical advantage of 3.3. .3. So somewhere up again, like in here, and this is not gonna be perfect. So don't uh, get mad at me here that it's not exactly on 3.3. .3. And then we had six uh, strands of string and a mechanical advantage of five. So somewhere up like this. Okay, so if we connect these together, uh, we basically kind of have like a line that looks something like this. Okay. Um, so it says then last question number three, I believe. Yep, last question is, how does the increasing number of strands of string attached to your weight affect the mechanical advantage of your pulley system? All right, well, I don't know about you, but it seems pretty clear to me that um, as we increase the number of strands of string that we have attached to our weight, our mechanical advantage is going up, right? So they are directly related to one another. So we're gonna put down, um, I guess we'll do this in red, as, as the number of, number of strands of string attached to the weight increases, so does the mechanical oh, mechanical advantage. There we go. All right. So basically, as for pulleys, um, if we want to have a pulley system that is going to drastically reduce the amount of force we have to input, we just simply have to have more strands of string attached to the weight pulling up, and that will then make it easier for us to do our work. So, all right, that is it for this virtual lab. Um, I hope you learned a little bit about pulleys and how their mechanical advantage is determined. But again, as always, if you have any questions, make sure that you reach out to me so that we can get, uh, you can get the help that you need. All right, guys, that is it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'm Mr. B and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.